because it is so specific to the lessor, this rate might not be known to the lessee. Why? Because as we discussed, the lessee might have a different definition of lease payments because of the guaranteed residual value or the unguaranteed residual value. Similarly, the lessee might have different initial direct cost than the lessor. And therefore, the lessee and therefore the lessee might not be able to compute this rate by himself. So he might have to ask the lessor as to what his interest rate implicit in the lease is. But if the lessee cannot get an access to this rate, he might have to use a different rate, in which case the lessor would be using a different rate and lessee would be using a different rate. The preference for lessee should also be that he should use the rate used by the lessor, that is the interest rate implicit in the lease. But if the lessee cannot get that rate, he would have to use some other rate which is called lessee's incremental borrowing rate of interest. Now according to the standard, the lessee's incremental borrowing rate of interest is the rate of interest that a lessee would have to pay to borrow over a similar term and with a similar security the funds necessary to obtain an asset of a similar value to the right of use asset in a similar economic environment. Which means that if that particular lessee would have obtained a loan from somewhere else to actually purchase that asset, to use that asset, the same asset and under the same security, which means if that asset has been placed as a security to the lessor, it should be assumed that the lessee would have placed that same asset to the, as a security to that other party which, have, which would have lended the money to the lessee. Then that rate at which that other party would have given that loan to the lessee should be considered as the lessee's incremental borrowing rate of interest. To be short, it is the interest that would be charged to the lessee if the lessee would have actually borrowed the funds from somewhere else to, to actually purchase that asset. And not just somewhere else, but also in the similar environment, uh, under the similar security, to get the similar value of the asset and for a similar term. So there should be nothing different when we are actually computing this hypothetical rate and that rate is that the lessee would have to pay if the lessee would have taken the similar loan, exactly similar loan from somewhere else. We just discussed what the lease payments are and what the interest rate could be and we realized that lessor might be using different lease payments and the lessee might be using different lease payments. And the lessor might be using different interest rate to compute its interest and the lessee might be using different interest rate for computing its interest if it's not available to the lessee by the lessor. So we are in a position now that we can actually talk about lessee's accounting separately and lessor's accounting separately in great detail.